Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Adam McIntyre, our young adults pastor, and he just brought a message in the Vibrant series from First Peter. Welcome, Adam. Thank you so yes. much. Yes. Okay. Me. What a great message! And actually, between the promo video we did about Lent uh, right. approaching, and your very thought-provoking sermon, we have a range of questions that have come in okay. today. So I'm excited to ask them. Yeah. Um, so what we'll do is let's just start with the sermon, and okay. then we'll move into some questions that came in around Lent. Perfect. Okay. Great. Um, okay. So this question actually came in three times. Okay. Basically the same question, though, in all different ways. Right. Um, from the sermon. Um, does it betray the gospel or mm-hmm. should Christians use uh, deadly force to destroy or to enter into violence um, to either defend ourselves or to defend other people? What, right. what does the Bible say about that? Uh, this is a, it's a very good question and it's a very tough question that has been debated since really the foundation of the church. You um, You can look at any number of theologians and they'll be split down the middle as far as um, whether or not we should practice nonviolence, pacifism um, in the face of our enemies or whether there are times when we are authorized to use deadly force in order to protect um, either ourselves or especially to protect families or to protect those who are suffering who who can't protect themselves. And um, so you go back to the, the very early church, you go back to even the time of Jesus and his teachings are quite clear on how we're supposed to treat our enemies as far as we are called to love them um, and never repay evil for evil and pray for them when they persecute us. And um, you even see his disciples having trouble grasping this concept because they were expecting Messiah who was going to come and lead this violent revolt against the government of Rome. But Jesus came and was serving people. And whenever whenever Jesus was arrested and the guards were coming to take him away and Peter takes out a sword and cuts off the guard's ear, Peter said, or Jesus says, put your sword away. That's not how we do things anymore. And he heals the guard's ear. And Origen, one of the early church fathers says the moment that Jesus disarmed Peter, he disarmed every Christian. And so for the first few hundred years of the church's existence, Christians were not allowed to take part in the military. However, things began to change over time. Eventually Constantine took over the church and, or took over the uh, state of Rome, he became Caesar, and he adopted Christianity as the official state, or official religion of the state. And um, at that moment, you see feelings towards war and violence begin to change. And so then, for the last 1700 years now, there's been a lot of debates as to whether or not Christians are allowed to. And you look at the Old Testament, and you see God authorizing war. You see God, uh, in fact, commanding his followers to go to war. And so it's this really tough thing to figure out. And so um, that's really a big non-answer, essentially, as far as, uh, and and I'm not going to have a good answer um, uh, or a satisfying answer. I I can tell you, me personally, um, through a lot of heartache and, and a lot of studying, I have landed on the side of pacifism, of I myself, um, would try my best to not resort to violence. I know myself well enough to know that I'm not there yet. If someone broke into my house and threatened my wife, I know I would see white and I would probably lose control and defend her at any cost. It doesn't mean that I think I'm right to do that. Um, And and it's hard too, because my little brother was in the military, he was in the army, he went to Afghanistan. Um, He told me about the horrors and the things that he saw there and and how rough it was. and I'm so proud of him that he did that. I really am. I'm so proud that he was, that he had the courage to do that, um, that he was willing to sacrifice himself for his loved ones here, for this country. That's something I'm very proud of. And so it's really hard to land on one side or another. And so I would encourage anyone who's wrestling with that question um, to really study it for themselves. Mm-hmm. There's so much written about that particular topic um, with so many different theologians landing on either side of it. Um, And so read it for yourself. Read the words of Jesus. Read the Old Testament. Read all about the early church um, and try your best to come up um, with your own thoughts, your own opinions on it. But 
Sorry, good, that was a good. long non-answer. No, it's there, great but. because it is one of those questions where it's not it's not a black and white. Right. Um, exactly. You know. It's very great. Okay, so uh, let's talk about um, just a couple of personal situations that okay. people are struggling with that sure. have come up through the questions. Um, one of those is. Um, uh, a woman who wrote in who said that they have a friend at work okay. and um, they're a Christian, but sometimes there's things that um, this person does at work that negatively affects their employees and she fears that she might lose her job. Okay. Um, help her, how can she handle that? Because she sure. wants to give her hope. Right. Again, uh, that's, that's a tough situation. Um, Paul calls us to speak the truth in love so this is not something where you just try to ignore it and hope that it goes away. Um, it, she will need to confront that person um, and, and speak honestly and truthfully towards her. Um, however, Pastor Dan uh, gave me some really wise words um, that um, someone had told him once, that when you do something like that, you first sit them down and ask, do you trust me? Do you trust that I want what's best for you? Do you trust that I love you? Um, and, uh, and then you ask them, you know, um, are you like, are you prepared to hear the truth? Like you basically warn them, like, I'm about to, if you trust me, prepare yourself for what I'm about to say. And so you try to, um, let them know ahead of time, Hey, I'm about to tell you something that might be kind of hard to hear. Um, and then you speak the truth to, to them as gently as you possibly can, but also as honestly um, as you can. And, and I find that these these conversations happen so much easier in the context of a relationship. Absol oh, yeah. Absolutely. Of just building the relationship, um, yeah. whether it's coffee or lunch or something outside of the office where you right. can get to really know someone and Absolutely. have a real conversation exactly. to be able to speak that yeah. way. You have to, to earn the right to, yeah, to, to speak, speak into, into that. Exactly. Um, uh, yeah, you can't just go up to someone money, that you don't yeah. know. They're not going to listen to you. They're not gonna, they are don't care what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Show uh, them that you love them first. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. But that person knows you. And if they know that you love them and mm -hmm. that they trust you, then they're much more willing to listen to what you have to say because uh, they know that it's coming from a place of, um, place of love and a place of honest concern for that person. It's good. It's yeah. good. Okay, so another situation is... Um, Someone who has a spouse that's a non-believer okay. um, and just feeling like there's there's constantly strife, there's constantly um, arguments and having to remain calm, having to remain cool. Um, what are the right words and the right actions in that situation to help lead a non-believing spouse to Christ? Again, that's an that's a incredibly <laughs> tough situation. Um, First Peter actually talks about that very subject uh, just a few verses earlier than what we uh, discussed today in first Peter 3 1 he says likewise wives be subject to your own husbands so that even if some do not obey the word they may be one without a word by the conduct of their wives when they see your respectful and pure conduct so in this situation there might not necessarily be the perfect words to say um, that would allow him to see Christ the, the best thing to do would be to live in such a way, again, like we talked about earlier, that your hope shines through um, to live um, in a way. She basically needs to live as Christ towards him. She needs to serve him and love him um, the same way that Jesus serves and loves us. She needs to be the hands and feet of Jesus to him. That would be the best way mm -hmm. that he would come to know Christ. And it's difficult because it could take time. Uh, it could take a lot of time. And in doing something like that, you are suffering in moments like that, um, and even to an extent you're suffering for the cause of Christ because you are having to serve and love someone um, who might not necessarily know what you're doing, respect what you're doing, care what you're doing, um, and so you're having to sacrifice of yourself uh, in order to display Christ to somebody else, and that can be an incredibly difficult thing to do, um, and that's why it's so important that you rely on prayer and on scripture and on other community. I, I would mm, definitely encourage her, community. make sure to get in community uh, with other bro brothers and sisters. Since her husband's not a Christian, she needs to be surrounded outside of her home with brothers and sisters who can encourage her and who can give her advice and things like that. Good. Okay, so let's kind of shift our focus a little bit okay. to Lent. Um, and some questions came around about that. I believe, I think, whether you've been in church for a long time or new church, sometimes there's these words that come up right. that you're like, well, I've heard that word a lot, but I'm sure. not really sure. So kind of walk us through and just explain um, 
we have Ash Wednesday, we have yeah. Easter, we have Ascension after that. What, what, does, that, what does that even mean? Sure. Uh, so Ash Wednesday, uh, that marks the beginning of Lent. That's the day where we repent and cover ourselves in ashes. And what that is, is that reminds us of who we really are. Um, it reminds us of the fact that we are mortal creatures. We are finite. Um, we came from the dust and we will return to the dust. Um, and so we repent of trying, of pretending to be anything other than what we are. Because so often we act like we are not mortal and we act like we don't need God. We act like we don't need salvation, that we don't need the resurrection. And so this moment, Ash Wednesday, it's a moment where we repent of that. Uh, and it also helps to illuminate what Jesus has done for us, the fact that we do have the resurrection, even though really we're just ash, mm. we're, we're dust that's gonna to return to dust, but we have the resurrection because of the victory of Christ. So that day is meant to remind us of that. It's also the beginning of Lent. And so with Lent, that marks a time where you intentionally give up, you intentionally sacrifice or fast from something. Um, and that something should be um, whatever it is in your life that distracts you from your relationship with Jesus. Um, and so you take a step back, look at your life, figure out, okay, what is it that really consumes my time, that consumes my thoughts, um, that consumes my affections? Um, and particularly, what is it in my life that takes me away from Jesus? Um, and so uh, whatever that thing is, um, that is probably a good indication that that's something you should give up for Lent so that during that time period where you're remembering who you are, you are also able to focus uh, more intently on your relationship. Right, so you actually, Jesus. you fill that space right. with, whether it's reading your Bible more or exactly. praying more or... Absolutely. Right. Yeah, so for me, internet is a huge one. Me too. Man, it, it consumes yeah. so Facebook's much of my time. Oh, yeah. Cut for Lent. Oh, and it's so tough and it's so hard to do. <laughs> But then you find yourself twiddling your thumbs, like, okay, I'm not on the internet, what do I do? Well, that's the time where you spend with Jesus, where you read scripture, you pray, you read books from theologians, and you learn, you grow in your relationship with Christ. Um, and so then uh, Ascension, Ascension Day, uh, so that's... So wait, Lent is between Ash Wednesday right, sorry, and, Easter. and Easter, right? right. And then, so, we, then we celebrate Easter. Right, and so okay. Easter... Uh, so there's Good Friday, the day of the crucifixion. There's Holy Saturday, mm -hmm. um, his descension uh, into hell. And then there's Resurrection Sunday, mm -hmm. the day that he resurrected from the grave, the day that marks his victory. Mm -hmm. And so that's Easter Sunday. Um, and then after that, uh, we have Ascension Day. And so Ascension um, is, you can find that in Acts 2. And that is um, the moment of Pentecost where Jesus ascends to heaven, but then the Holy Spirit descends upon all of his people. That's the moment where you see, it's almost like a huge crazy party breaks mm -hmm. out and all of the people start speaking in tongues and all that crazy uh, stuff starts happening. Um, but that, that was Jesus fulfilling his promise that I'm not gonna leave you here as orphans. Um, I'm gonna give you my Holy Spirit. Now all of you um, who repent, who follow me, you will be given this gift of the Holy Spirit. So I'm with you always. My spirit is with you always. And so that's, that's what Ascension is all about. Yeah. This is a really sweet time for the church Absolutely. every year. Oh, yeah. um, yes, so I just encourage you to, um, you know, try some, try it this year with Lent. Try Absolutely. to give something up and um, draw closer. Well, thank you for your message today. And yeah. um, uh, it's very thought-provoking and challenging as well. So thank you, Adam. Yeah, and thank you me. for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.